Moving on to the next question. This question is going to be pretty tricky because it's a little bit different than the questions that we've been doing so far. So we have to determine the value of a so that the average rate of change of the function f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 7 on the interval where x is between negative 5 and a is negative 1. Right, so usually what's happening is we're given a function and we are given an interval with no constants like this and we have to find the average rate of change. But in this case, the interval has this constant a and we are given the average rate of change and we have to find that constant. So we have to sort of work backwards here. So average rate of change is what? It's gonna be the slope of the secant right, between these two points for this function here. So it's going to be the value of the function at this point a minus the value of the function at this x value of negative 5. And it's going to be over a minus negative 5. And this is going to equal negative 1. Right, so notice how this equation here is the equation for the average rate of change, and that's going to equal negative 1. Right? And don't get confused with this a here. So like, let's pretend that this a instead was a 3, and we were finding the average rate of change between an x value negative 5 and 3. Then we would have f of 3 minus f of negative 5 all over 3 minus negative 5. But because this is an a here, we won't have threes here, we would have a's instead. Okay, so f of a is gonna be what? Well, notice how we have to plug in this a value for all of the x values in the function. So it's going to be a squared minus 3a plus 7. What about f of negative 5? Well, we'll plug in negative 5 for all the x values in the uh, function. So we'll have negative 5 squared minus 3 times negative 5 plus 7. Notice how I put the negative 5 in brackets everywhere. And you always want to do that. f of any number, always put that number in brackets just to make sure that you don't make a mistake in the algebra. So negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be positive 15. So 25 plus 15 is 40, plus 7 is 47. Right? So f of a is a squared minus 3a plus 7. Right? So this here in square brackets is f of a. And then we're going to be subtracting f of negative 5, which is 47. Right, so I'm going to erase this portion here, and this is going to be all over a minus negative 5, that's the same as a plus 5. Right, and this is still going to all equal negative 1. Now, I'm not going to put this equal sign here, it's kind of weird to have two equal signs in an equation. So, notice how we have this equation here. We got this expression on the left side, which is one fraction equaling negative 1. So let's do a little simplifying. Notice how the uh, numerator can simplify this 7 and negative 47. Those are like terms. So we'll have a squared minus 3a. 7 minus 47 is negative 40. And then this is going to be all over a plus 5. And then uh, this negative 1 we'll put over 1 here because notice how we're going to have a fraction, one fraction on each side of the equal sign so we can cross multiply. Right, so I put this negative 1 over 1 here. So 1 times this expression, let's continue this up here. Well, that's just going to be that same expression. So that's going to be a squared minus 3a minus 40. And then the right side is going to be negative 1 times a plus 5. So we'll have negative 1 in front and this is going to be a plus 5. So, simplifying everything, a squared minus 3a minus 40. Let's distribute this negative 1 inside the brackets, so we'll have negative a minus 5. Now let's bring over, uh, let's bring everything over to one side and simplify it further. So we'll, uh, we'll 
bring this negative a over, that will become positive a. Negative 3a plus a, those are going to be like terms. That will give us negative 2a. Then negative 40 plus 5, right? This negative 5 will turn positive when we bring it over, is going to be negative 35. That's going to equal 0. So now notice how we have a quadratic equation. Now, a couple of ways to um, solve a quadratic equation. You can use the quadratic formula or you can factor. And notice how this here is going to factor smoothly. This uh, a squared minus 2a minus 35, that factors into a minus 7, a plus 5. So that means that a minus 7 has to equal 0 or a is equal to 7. That's 1 uh, case. And then we can have a plus 5 equaling 0. So a is equal to negative 5. That is another case. But notice that this solution of negative 5 is not really going to work, right? Because if we put negative 5 here instead of a, we're going to have an interval from negative 5 to negative 5, which is weird, because then we're going to end up with 0 over 0 for the average rate of change. And that's going to be undefined. So this solution to our question is not going to work. So the other answer is 7. And notice how 7 makes sense, because now we have a legit interval from negative 5 to positive 7. So this a value of 7 is the correct answer. So pretty tricky question. Um, again, usually when you're working with average rate of change, they give you the function, they give you the interval, you have to find the average rate of change. In this case, we have to go backwards. We had this variable a here. Right? So we had to make an expression with that variable for the average rate of change. And then that average rate of change was equal to negative 1. That was given in the question. So we had to solve for that variable a, did some cross multiplying, got to this point, and then we got this a value of 7.